I have been motivated by my mother eating a romaine lettuce salad every day for lunch, yet still worrying she is going to get sick by looking at someone. Why would someone eat a food that is literally grown in human waste, but be afraid of someone breathing on them through two masks from six feet away? It's funny because you'll see those same people rinse vegetables under cold running tap water for 30 seconds and pretend as if they washed anything bad off. Not only is that doing absolutely nothing if there was any pathogenic bacteria, you're also likely washing your produce with water that is laden with agrochemicals and estrogenic endocrine inhibitors, not to mention fluoride and chlorine. Think about this. If you dipped a piece of lettuce in a toilet bowl, would you eat it after rinsing it off with water? No? Okay, what about after disinfecting the lettuce with a cleaner and boiling it? Still no? Yeah, I didn't think so. You don't want the poo-poo covered lettuce anywhere near your mouth. But, since you didn't physically see manure get tossed on that lettuce leaf, you're good to go. You're fine. This would apply to any piece of food, not just lettuce. And I could say the same thing about a steak. If you dip the steak in a toilet, regardless of what you did to that steak to clean it afterwards, you still wouldn't eat it. But a steak isn't dipped in a toilet, a vegetable basically is. And some fruits, you can argue that they didn't touch the ground because they grow in a tree. In addition to this fecal matter manure stuff, you have everything else that can be on the ground. You know, what about insects? We did a video probably a year ago now talking about the insect content of certain plant foods. You know, not surprisingly, the foods vegans tended to crave were very high in insects. I'm sure we're all familiar with bug butter, aka peanut butter. So it's great that they are getting some animal protein in their diets unintentionally, but there probably is a concern here. Are insects clean? Not quite. Insects can carry pathogenic bacteria from one location to another. If a bug flies from a factory farm to another one, or eats some feedlot cow poop then burrows into a plant on that same farm, the produce will likely become infected with any bacteria that was on the fecal matter on those crops. This probably explains why people get sick despite washing fruits and vegetables. You know, the insect burrowed deep inside said fruit or vegetable, embedding the bacteria somewhere you can't wash off. On top of insects, are there small rodents and animals that can do the same thing? I mean, we all know rats and mice, can carry all types of pathogenic bacteria, you know, but are there any other types of diseases that can be transferred via saliva to a crop? You know, perhaps chronic wasting disease in deer, which is Creutzfeldt Jakobs, aka mad cow disease. You know, the prions were said to stay on the leaves the animals licked for years and years. You know, that being said, there's no proof that these diseases can transfer from animal to human, and I would imagine they would have already, as plenty of deer are licking their ways through cornfields. I'm sure everyone has found a bug in a plant food they're eating, and anyone that's worked in food service knows how easily ants and other insects get into grain stores, pantries, sugar, but the modern world applies here. You know, the reason we get sick is because there are now unnatural strains of bacteria that these animals and insects can carry due to modern medicine. In the hypothetical worst case scenario of conventional factory farming, both vegetables and meat can potentially get you very sick. The concern with both of these foods is cross-contamination of fecal matter with the product. Not necessarily because poop is dangerous, it's because antibiotics and modern diets cause strong acid-resistant bacteria that makes us very sick, particularly E. coli and salmonella. When manure is used from humans, cattle, any animal fed and unnatural diet, especially if they take antibiotics, the manure contains highly destructive pathogenic bacteria. It's why we see so many recalls with conventionally raised animal products and plant products, whereas organic, local, grass-fed stuff rarely, if never, gets recalled. I personally you know, can't remember it off the top of my head, a scenario where they had to recall something from a local farm that was raised properly. If the poop was from a grass-fed cow, it wouldn't contain acid-resistant strains of E. coli and salmonella, Therefore, the strain of bacteria won't get you sick if it enters your digestive tract. This is the chief concern of getting very sick. 
Other aspects of conventional agriculture result in our food damaging us, but this can literally kill you as opposed to just making you unhealthy. I guess we could say this isn't a good look so far. You have a vegetable that was covered in human waste, then a bunch of dirty insects and animals played with it, all in a fiesta of acid-resistant super salmonella and E. coli. Outside of that, how many people physically touched this vegetable before it went in your mouth? Probably several on the farm. Who picked it? Did someone wash it? Did someone pack it up? Then it's sold to a distributor or wholesaler and is probably touched by at least one or two more people. Then it goes to the supermarket where it's touched by at least two or three more people before it gets on the shelf. And who knows how many people touched that apple before you bought it. So I would guess a minimum of 10 people touched any single fruit or vegetable before you consume it in many scenarios, perhaps three or four on the lower end, and even one or two if you go to a local farmer's market. Zero if you grow it yourself. I think this is less of a concern with organic produce that might not have as much exposure to pathogenic strains of bacteria. Plus, how can we not mention the Toyota Corolla? If this illness was real, anyone who shopped in a supermarket would be dead already. We didn't really touch on agrochemicals. All of these herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, poisons they are spraying on our food supply. All of that stuff stays on the fruits and vegetables when you eat them. If an animal eats, say, corn or soy that was sprayed with agrochemicals, not every single one translates directly to the meat. Out of the thousands of chemicals that can be sprayed on crops, the animal can detox some of them. The same can't be said of the vegetables. Yes, estrogenic feedlot beef will destroy your hormones and slowly decay your health, but it's a step away from poisoning you, whereas drinking conventional celery juice every morning is probably destroying your liver with how many toxins are in it. And you can't exactly wash this stuff off of the produce. It's absorbed into it. It was sprayed on the crops many, many times over the course of growing them. And you have some evil vegans actually pushing a nonsense agenda, convincing people that non-organic is better because organic harms more animals. These people don't care about your health. They would save the life of a rat over a human being. At that, the rat that is poisoning your food. One other concern to touch on is the water being used in these agricultural practices to grow the crop or feed the animal. How many pollutants, agrochemicals, halogens like fluoride were contained in the water that was used? You know, with all of these factors, we have to keep in mind that animals have some filtration. The immune system, some detoxability with their livers to remove some negative aspects that don't translate in the meat. If your tea leaves were grown with fluoridated water, they're going to have an incredibly high fluoride content, and if you drink that tea, you're basically poisoning yourself. Your meat will have some fluoride as well, but if the cow gets enough iodine, it's not nearly as much fluoride and not a big issue. So not only are animals processing all of these negative things to reduce them in the flesh somewhat, they aren't directly exposed to fecal matter, insects, rodents at the time of processing, nor is the meat touched so many times in not as sanitary as they could be environments. You know, I'm sure these farmers and these vegetable and fruit processing plants, I'm sure they're sanitary, but nothing is as spick and span as a butcher shop or a slaughterhouse. These facilities, abattoirs, are arguably one of the cleanest environments you can be in. They literally build them with drainage, they hose them down every night, super high temperature water, all of these chemicals to clean. The only reason there are beef recalls is when they grind up the organs or there is a slaughter error and they get fecal matter from the intestines into the meat. And if you notice, it's almost always ground meat recalls, probably because these people try to get away with maximizing the profit of every animal and they're trying to grind up as much as possible. So the only possibility of illness from meat is cross-contamination, and that's if the animal has unnatural strains of antibiotic and acid-resistant bacteria in their guts. That's why whenever I eat raw meat, I make sure it's grass-fed from a local farm. That way, even if a mistake was made in the slaughter process, I know that a little fecal matter from a properly raised grass-fed cow is not an issue. And there was no reason whatsoever 
to shut down meat processing plants when you take this all into consideration. It's all complete nonsense. Everything is orchestrated, and if they were telling the truth, as I said, everyone in a supermarket would be dead right now. All of those middle-aged moms eating romaine lettuce salads thinking they're gonna lose weight would have been dead by now. And to be fair, they probably are getting sick several times a year from eating that poisonous lettuce, uh, but we'll let them wear their masks all they want. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. Above all guys, please share the video if you can. If you guys wanna go down in the comments below, there are a bunch of ways to support me. Organ supplements, Frankie's Naturals, Frankie's syringe meat. You can sign up for the newsletter on our farm. Uh, we did hit 100K subscribers recently. I'm gonna think of something I can do for you guys. Outside of that, you guys enjoy the rest of your night.